today, I want to ask you all, uh, we're real, we're honest, right? We're real, we're honest uh, as believers in Christ. And I just want to ask you, how many of y'all are prone to forget stuff? <laughs> all right. I mean, I'm talking about you. you I'm mean, everybody forgets stuff, but you, I'm like, like people that know you best know that you're notorious for forgetting. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. Notorious for see they 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 wondering over that. They ain't been married long enough. They're like, what? I don't know. You you Sonny you you Devin. I don't know. But look. Um, so name some of the stuff. Okay. Name some of the stuff that, that sometimes you or your spouse or your friend is prone to forget. Go ahead and shout it out. Anniversary? Okay, that's trouble right there, boy. That's, huh? Kids? Oh, keys. No, kids too. Kids too. I've heard, I, hey, I, I've been in youth ministry. People didn't forget their kids on purpose. <laughs> on purpose. What else? Phones. Phones. Wallets. Tablet, yeah. Tablet. What about this? Charger. Anybody forget your charger? Woo! Man, we can go on and on. Uh, I put down my, my glasses. Anybody that wear glasses forgot your glasses now and forgot what it Now, the problem is, is you can't see. <laughs> you ever thought about this, you nine glass wearers? When you forget your glasses, you can't even find them. Because you need them to see. So you need, I'm around and time. Hey, y'all, help me find my glasses because I can't even... <laughs> I can't even see. It's, see, y'all didn't think about that, but now I have compassion. You ever came into a room and forgot why you was there? Is it just me or I'm getting old? Okay. It's like you, like, you pop up. See, even Eve, see, she young. She said, she walked in there real happy. It was like, why am I in here? Why, why am I even in here? I'm going to walk on back. Uh, we are forgetful, but don't worry, y'all. We, we live in a world full of gadgets, right? And uh, we, we got... A lot of ways to be reminded of stuff. This phone has been a breakthrough for me. Google, y'all. Y'all need to use these reminders, these reminder apps, stuff that I forget. It's like, man, you know, I've been telling Mike Cook for weeks, I'm going to get with you, I'm going to call you, I'm going to call you. I forget. I love Mike. But then on the phone, they say, call Mike. I'm like, call Mike Cook. I'm going to call Mike Cook. These gadgets are life-changing, y'all. And I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to be real. My wife... She the queen of reminders. She is the queen of reminder notes. Look, she don't trust cell phones. She don't trust technology. My wife is old school. If you come up in there, she got a grandma calendar right up there. Like, y'all remember them? Y'all know what that is? Some of y'all don't even know what a calendar is. It's a calendar. It's got the days and all of that on there. 31 days, and you put it on the wall, put it on a little nail, and it tells you she got a calendar, and my wife will write you a note in a minute. You come to my house, you're going to see something written. I even got something out of the car. Sorry, babe. I just grabbed a few because my wife, man, she is just like, she got a note. What that say, bro? What that say? Post office. Post office. <laughs> it's time to go to the post office. She ain't relying on no phone. Look at that. Look at that. What that say? What that say? What that say, my brother? Write this. Gas. Gas. Go get some gas. <laughs> she said, go get some gas, boy. I mean, it's right there. I just got these out of the car. I'm telling you. And, and I mean, she'll write it on scrap paper, notebook paper, toilet paper, whatever she can get her hands on. It, she will write those things. But the best thing about it is she'll write down truth, too. Now, I'll be washing my hands and say, you know, trust the Lord. I'm like, yes, Lord. And all around the house, set your mind on Jesus. I'm just going to get a hammer and I see a note saying, set your mind on Jesus. I'm like, yes, Lord. I love Karen Turner's reminding ministry in my life. I'm telling you, some husband ought to say amen because you wouldn't know where to go or what to do without your wife's reminding ministry. I see, I see you, Janae. Come on, you got to say amen, somebody. <laughs> but you know what, y'all? My wife is really modeling for us the reminding role that God has placed in our lives. Do you understand that the scriptures, God has given us scriptures, and I counted doing my little study, I think it's about 150 times in scripture that the word, the Greek or Hebrew word is translated into English, remember. Can you say remember? remember. 
like 150 times God says remember 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 and not only that not only the scriptures because we're so forgetful not only the scriptures but the spirits in John 14 26 do you realize that the Holy Spirit has a reminding ministry one of his most powerful ministries in a believer's life is the ministry of reminding Jesus says I'm gonna die and I'm gonna raise from the dead and it's gonna be to your advantage why because I'm gonna send you the Holy Spirit and he's going to remind you He's going to remind you of what I say. He's going to remind you of who you are in Christ. So not only does God remind us through the scriptures, not only does he remind us through the spirit, but did you realize that God reminds us through the saints? That, the, that, that other believers in your life, God has placed them in your life to remind you. As a matter of fact, the collective church gathers together and it, it's meant to look around to remind you, I ain't in this alone. Your presence is so powerful because it reminds me, I'm not here alone. I'm not in this alone. I'm not walking through this alone. God uses scripture. God uses the spirit and he uses the saints to remind each other because watch this we don't just forget our keys we don't just forget uh, our glasses tragically we get so distracted y'all be honest right we get so anxious we get so focused on temporal things that we forget the Lord in the midst of everyday life we forget the Lord we forget the one whose breath is in our lungs we forget the Savior we forget he died we forget he rose we forget that he's for us we forget that he's with us if we're honest we don't just forget temporal things we forget the one who matters most and we ought to say I'm sorry Lord father forgive me for forgetting the most important one in the universe the one that if he called me home, I would die right now. How could it be that we can forget him? We need to remember, remember, remember. The Lord's like, I want my people to remember. I've given them 150 commands in Scripture to remember. I've placed myself inside of them, the Holy Ghost reminding ministry, and I've given them the saints. How forgetful are we, especially when trials come, especially in the midst of everything that's going on in our lives. We need to be reminded, reminded. Can somebody just look at somebody next to him and just say, I need to be reminded. Please remind me. Please remind me. Uh-oh, what's going on? We're going to keep pressing. And so... In the stress and the strain, tell me if I need to do something else, but I'm going to keep preaching. In the stress and strain and selfish pursuits of our everyday life. Is that me? Okay. Okay. I'm going to do this then. I really don't need a, a mic, but, but I'm going to try this one. Should I try this one? Let me try this one. If this one don't work, then I'm going a cappella. All right. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, and so, yeah, I won't go too far. I'll stay put. But one of the greatest blessings, I want us to think about this. One of the greatest blessings about being in the body of Christ and being in each other's lives is the blessing and the calling and the responsibility to remind one another of who God is. To remind one another of the hope that we have in Christ. To remind one another of his power and his presence and his promises. And, and so um, we see that in Paul... And in the early church leaders, I just jotted down a few times where the reminding ministry of Paul and in, in the church leaders in the New Testament, I'll just shout it out real quick. Romans 15, 15, Paul says, I wrote to remind you. He told the saints in Rome, he says, I wrote this to remind you. Read again, mind, put it in your head. I wrote this to put truth in your head again. That's what it remind means, to put it in your head again. First Corinthians 4, 17, he says, I sent Timothy. Why you sent Timothy? 
I sent Timothy to Corinth to remind you of some things because you forgot. You're thinking about all other type of stuff. Your life is busy. Your life is packed. I understand. I sent this believer to remind you. First Corinthians 15, 1, Paul said to the church, I want to remind you of the gospel. I want to remind you of the most important message. I know we shouldn't forget that he died, but we forget that he died. He said, I want to remind you. 2 Timothy 1, 6, he says, I remind you to stir up the gift of God in you. He said, Timothy, you're gifted, but you need to be reminded to use your gift. Get off the sidelines. Get in the game. Use your spiritual gift to build up the body of Christ. That was for somebody right there. 2 Timothy 2, 14, he says, remind them of these instructions from the Lord. He told Titus and Timothy, your pastoral ministry in the church is to remind people. Everybody's looking for a new revelation. I want a new word from God. I want a new prophecy. I want a new, no, no. You need to be reminded of the old word. It needs to go deeper. 2 Peter 1, 12, I want to always remind you. Jude 5, Jesus' half-brother says, I want to remind you, church, we always need to be reminded in this dangerous world. We always need to be reminded of what's true. In this distracting world, we need to always be reminded of what's eternal. In this demonic world, we need to always be reminded. Can somebody say, remind me? Remind me. Remind me. I need to be reminded reminded and so for the rest of our time this is what I want to help by the power of the Spirit serve we don't often do this but I got some notes that I want uh, everybody to have can you pass those out on this side bro can you pass those out oh everybody get a sheet and we just gonna slow down and walk through this together because I really believe the Holy Spirit wants us, and we're going to throw some scripture up on the screen. And we're going to get real specific about reminding each other of some things. This is not an exhaustive list, and you can use your own words. This is just a little tool to help you remind each other of what really matters. And I just want to say these kind of reminders, uh, I pray, will informally become a part of the loving, normal, conversational culture of our church. You got it? Got it? So this is not meant to, to you know, this is not meant to, to pull out your back pocket and be like, hold on, hold on, hold on, number two. Hey, man, uh, remember to, no, no, I pray that these, this little tool would end up becoming an informal part of our conversational culture as a church. Um, th th this is the way I put it, Jen. In other words, y'all, uh, this is an effort to help us weave eternal intentionality into our everyday conversations when we're together. That reminding ministry, this sheet is just to help us weave. You know what weave is now. Weave, weave, especially for my black sisters. Weave, we've come a long way. Weave has come a long way. I remember, I am a part of the original weave generation, I think. I think, I mean, when we first came out, we, it was all, you could see all the glue, all the, everything, the patches. I'm like, y'all need to take that out your head because y'all better, the youngsters better be glad because when we first came out, it was, it was like crazy glue over here, a piece of the hair, and all of it was all on the streets. It's still in the streets sometimes, but it's not as much. We've grown. Weave has grown. And, and I say that for a reason. I say that for a reason. Like weaving, you have to grow in your ability to weave eternal conversation into your natural conversation. Just like weave, right? Weave takes uh, uh, the weave hair into the regular real hair, and you can't even tell where the weave started and where the weave. Y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. I want to redeem this weave thing. Weave eternal conversation into your conversation so that you don't know what's natural and what's spiritual. You'll just shift on them and be talking about the Lakers and then ask, uh, are you glad that you've been saved from the lake of fire? I know you like the Lakers, but the lake of fire is, I mean, like, I'm talking about that. You have to grow in that. 
First, it, look, it, it might seem kind of cray, it might look, look kind of patchy, kind of glued up. You might sound kind of weird. You just shift the conversation. Are you going to hell? You're like, wait a minute, we were just talking about. <laughs> you have to learn. So, real talk. I'm praying for real that God would help us weave eternal intentionality into our everyday conversations when we're together. And here's just eight. Eight life on life reminders and questions when we get together that we can ask. And by, by the way, thank you, James, for printing these out. And uh, this is just another example. I said, James, can, 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 did you get to print those out? He said, no, thank you for the reminder. I was like, that's my confirmation. We, we, we talking about the right thing. And so y'all, number one, when you get together, when you're hanging out, when you're eating donuts out there, when you FaceTime, when you're in a play date, when you're in the joy community, number one, remind each other to give thanks to our Father. It's right on your sheet. To give thanks to our Father. Can we say that together? To give thanks to our Father. I think we got 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Do we have that? It says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You are in each other's lives to remind each other to give thanks. Stop focusing on yourself. Stop focusing on your circumstances. It's his breath in your lungs. You remember the story of the ten lepers? All ten of them got blessed. How many came back to give thanks? Only one. Father, fill our church with one leper, the one leper spirit in here, the one leper culture, that we would come back and say, thank you for my life. Thank you for my strength. I know I don't have everything, but I want to remind my brothers and sisters, thank you for Jesus. Lord, make us a thankful church. Look, these questions, y'all, they, they just, this is what I thought about. How many of y'all seen those marriage questions that help you go a little deeper in your conversation? That's what me and my wife do. After all these years, we need some intentional questions to help us go a little deeper. So I'll pull it up so we don't just talk about the kids and just talk about the church and talk about the school. We need some intentional questions. That's what this sheet is meant to be, to help your spiritual conversation with your brothers and sisters weave in and out of natural and supernatural. So number one, Remind each other to give thanks to our Father. You might want to say something like this. It's on your sheet. What's something that you are thankful to God for? I mean, let that just be normal. You're hanging out, you're laughing, you're eating, and be like, man, what you thankful to God for? It's like, that reminds you to be thankful. But number two, number two, uh, remind each other that God speaks to us through the preached word. Remind each other that what? Let's read that together. That God speaks to us through the preached word. James 1.22. James 1.22. This is not just for the preached word. This is for any time the Bible is open. It says, be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. Tori prayed that in our pre-service prayer. Be doers of the word. When you open up the Bible, have a heart to do what God says. Whenever you see a verse, whether it's on a note, whether it's in the, it, it, whether it's in a conversation, but I would say especially when the word is preached, do you understand that there is something special about when God's people get together and God's book is open and God is speaking? He is speaking in a real specific way. Listen, don't treat the sacred gathering of the church on Sunday like an option. Oh, don't, oh man, I can't, can I say that again? Don't treat the sacred gathering of the church on Sunday like an option. Because if the Bible is open and, and, and a man or a woman is in front of you with the word of God in their hands proclaiming to you the word of the living God, listen, God is speaking. Yeah. 
in a special way when the people are gathered. I have been overseas and I've seen dirt poor, like poor, no shoes, no rags, living in a mud hut, they, they going through hurricanes and monsoons just to get to a little tin covering to worship the Lord on Sunday. But in America, it's an option. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. Hey, let another, let, let suffering come. Maybe that's what we need. I can't wait to hear from God together. Listen, and be doers of the word. Our brother James modeled that. He said, I heard a sermon. He didn't hear Kempton. He heard God. And he stopped basketball on Friday and he started Bible study. That's what it means to be a doer of the word. What is God saying to you now? Listen to him. Number three, number three. Oh yeah, the question, the question on the number two. Maybe you can ask, were you able to listen to this week's sermon? That's real practical, y'all. Uh, 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 maybe you can ask, hey, what, what's the Holy Spirit speaking to you through it? Is he calling you to start something? Is he calling you to, st is he calling you to stop something? Being real intentional in our conversation. Number three, I love this one. Remind each other that you are loved. Can you say that together? That you are loved. That is a beautiful thing. Look at Romans 8, 38 through 39. It says, I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord child of God you are loved nothing can separate you from the love of God we need to remind each other right in the middle of the sentence, right in the middle of the hangout, right in the middle of the gathering. Every now and then you need to remind one another, man, did you know how loved you are? You don't have to look for love in all the wrong places. You don't have to search for it in a man or in a woman. You are loved. You are loved. And, and may God help you to feel that. May he help you to feel that and experience that, that nothing can separate you from the love of God. I know you've been hurt. I know you've been abused. I know you've been in pain. I know you've gone through things. But God wants to use each other to remind one another, man, you are loved. And nothing can separate you from the love of God. When you feel like it, when you don't, remind each other that you're loved. When you disobey and when you obey, remind one another that you are loved. In sorrow and in joy, you are loved. And so you practically just ask, man, do you know how loved you are? Are you reminding yourself of how loved you are in Christ? weaving these kind of questions and intentional conversation into your fellowship will strengthen us, brothers and sisters. Number four, let's keep moving. Remind one another that, here, here it is, that God cares for you. All right? He cares for you. Can you say that? That God cares for you. Not only does, I heard one brother say, not only does God love you, but he does like you. He likes to be with you. And, and not only does he care about your big spiritual problems of God's wrath and all of these things that he did on the cross, he cares about your little problems too. Look at 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, cast all your anxieties on him. Why? Because he cares for you. Look, 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 look. when you are together, remind each other. Man, did, did you know that he cares for you, Antonique? He cares for you, Joni. He cares for your every anxiety. He, not just the big stuff. He cares that you hurt your foot. He cares that you had a strange uh, uh, doctor's uh, uh, report. He cares that your head is hurting and you're dealing with migraines. Remind each other. He cares about that emotional scar that won't seem to go away. He cares about that relationship that still isn't quite restored. He cares about that check that you thought was coming, but it didn't come. Do you understand? God wants to use each other to remind one another that not only does he love you, he cares about what's going on in your emotions. He cares what's going on in your mind. And you come along your side, your brother and your sister, and you say, you know what? Uh -uh. What kind of things are you carrying in your heart? 
Because listen, God does not want anxiety to be in your heart. He wants anxieties to be in his hands. Your heart and your mind is the wrong place. It's sinful, y'all. It's sinful to carry around worries in the heart that God has redeemed. He says in that verse, cast them onto him. Don't drop them. That's a fishing term. Look, throw them onto his sovereign shoulders. And that's why we exist, to come alongside each other and say, what's going on? Yeah. What, what, what are you worried about? Can, can I get up under that with you and help you to cast that onto the Lord? This is the body of Christ. This is what it means to weave intentional, eternal conversation into your ordinary life. Somebody say, remind me. Remind me, <laughs> remind me man. Remind me that God cares for me. Yeah. Remind me that he loves me. But not only that, number five. Listen, listen. Remind me that Jesus, look at your sheet. It's, it's right there. Remind me that Jesus desires to spend time with me. Read number five with me. Remind each other that what? Jesus desires to spend time with you. Notice I didn't say, did you read your Bible? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Did you pray? I'm not talking about rules. I'm talking about a relationship. Listen to Revelation 3. Do we have that? Look at this. This, this is Jesus' words. Uh, uh, hear it for the first time again. Uh, he says, those whom I love... I reprove. Anything? Ever been through something hard? Did you ever think that that was Jesus loving you? It is. Listen, he says, those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. A lot of times God is loving you through something hard so that you would leave stuff that you shouldn't be in alone. My Lord, help us. Behold, he says, I stand at the door. Now, who's knocking, y'all? It's Jesus. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. This is in the context of the church. Uh, uh, I've heard preachers use this as evangelism. This is not evangelism. This is not, hey, you're a sinner. Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. Surrender, right? No, 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 no. This is the church. He says, you have left intimacy with me. Like a, 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 me and my wife went to California on the beach. We were eating together. Intimate fellowship. That's what he's saying. Jesus wants to be more intimate with you than you even understand. He's knocking. That don't even make sense. The eternal, all-loving, all-knowing, all-powerful, needs nothing, Lord, is knocking on your door. You see why you have to remind each other that the Lord wants to be with you. It's not about you wanting to be with him. If you want to be with him, that's just a response. He goes after us. I went after my wife. I went after Karen Gilbert. I left Texas coming at her door saying, where's she at? Where's she at? I need to see her. I need to see her. She responded to my pursuits. That's what Jesus does. He wants us to remind each other, man, have you, have you gotten to enjoy his pursuit of you? How about we talk like that? Instead of, did you read your Bible today? No, no. Are you enjoying Jesus' pursuit of you in his word, in his presence, in prayer? Let me, let me, can I blow you away? I wish I could preach this verse. I'll just read it. John 17, 24. In this high priestly prayer, Jesus prays, Father, I desire them, my followers, to be with me, to enjoy my glory forever. Did you hear that? John 17, 24. Can I see your eyes for a minute? Because this is amazing. The Lord wants you to know his heart for you. When he's praying before he goes to the cross, he asks his father that you could be with him forever to enjoy all the stuff that he got in glory. That's heaven. He desires you. He desires you. Well, I don't know what I don't know. Look at the cross. He removed every obstacle to get to you. 
This is what grace is. Stop thinking me to him. It was him who created the world. It was him who went after Adam and Eve. It was him who chased down Jonah. It was him who sent Hosea after Gomer. It was him who came and left the 99 to get the one sheep. It was him who bankrupted heaven. It was him who died on the cross. It was him who rose. He desires you and he wants to use your mouth to remind your brothers and sisters of how much he desires. Thank you, Lord. How much you desire to be with us, to fill us up. Mm, number six, just a few more. I love this. Uh, the Lord wants to use us to remind each other that Jesus forgives our sins and he heals our souls. Let's weave that in. <laughs> you want to weave something in? Let's weave that in. Uh, let's read that together. Number six, that Jesus, what? Forgives, forgives our sins and heals. Let me read these few verses. First John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It didn't say if we sin. No, we're going to sin. If we confess our sins, if we say the same thing that he says about them, if we're honest. But then let's go a little deeper in James. It says, therefore, confess your sins to one another. No, let me start right there. Let me start right there. Let me start right there. Look, look, look. I love my Catholic brothers and sisters. There are people that are going to glory who are Catholic, but I'm not and should nobody, I know that ain't even good English, should nobody not. I'm going to say it that way because that's how jacked up this doctrine is. Should nobody not ever be going to no priest in nobody's little booth. And First Peter 2 9 says we are royal priests. We are a royal priesthood. So yeah, I'm going to confess my sin to the priest. His name is John Tamlin. His name is Zach. His name is, you know, his, his name is uh, Zay. His name, you know, uh, her name is Antonique. Her name is Janae. We are all priests. No wonder the Bible says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Look, look. <laughs> This means that we need to pray for transparency. We need to pray for confidentiality. We need to pray that God would give us grace to trust each other. Because the body of Christ is meant to be honest. Not like the world, you're going to tell your business all over the street, the gossip and put a mouth on me, don't put, no, 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 not in Christ. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be honest and to be open. And look, get the skeletons out. Get them out. Clean the closet. Be real. Come clean. What happened to you and what you did, the Lord wants to heal you from that. Yeah. I believe in therapy. I believe in counseling. But I believe that we have not maximized the healing that comes from confession and prayer. Okay. Remind one another. And so, weave. <laughs> weave. Is there some guilt that you're dealing with? That's when you know that you got a real friend and you're going deeper. You're not just talking about the latest news. And, Did you see what happened? What happened to him? I heard it. You know, that's great. But what shame are you dealing with from your past? What guilt are you dealing with from your present? And this, and, and, and this is mutual, right? Because nobody want to be sharing their heart with somebody that think they the Pope. <laughs> That's where the doctor goes, tell me what you did. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. <laughs> that's so horrible, but that's okay. You're loved. Brother, what did you talk? What did you do? <laughs> I'm not telling you another thing. <laughs> we all jacked up. 
And I have not experienced that at our church. I'm, I know we jacked up. I know we're broken. But man, share your heart. I share my heart. Let's get it under the blood together and be healed. Amen. Man. Number seven. Number seven. Two more and we're done. The reminding ministry, y'all. We forget so much. We forget so much the reminding ministry. Let's, let's remind each other that you have a church family. All right? You have a church family. That you have a church family. Can we say that together? That you have a church family. You ain't in this by yourself. First Peter 4. First Peter 4. I love this. It says, above all, keep loving one another, y'all. Earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. It says, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. How many times is one another in that? One, two, three. One another, one another, one another, one another. We are meant to do life together. It says, love one another. That means have affection for one another. Different backgrounds, different stories, different issues. The Bible says, love one another. If you're dipped in the red blood of Jesus Christ, we are called to have affections for one another that turn into action to help each other. It says also to show hospitality. That means to welcome. That means to welcome somebody into your heart. That means to welcome somebody into your house. And it says to serve one another. That means you use your gifts, you use your time, you use your talent, you use your resources to meet the needs in the body of Christ. What kind of testimony would a local church have if we were at least trying to live like this? And I see that grace in our church and I pray that it would continue. I pray what Tisha prays. She's on the road. Lord, keep her and bless her as she goes to her conference. But she prayed at the end of the service. She said, Father, help us not just say we're family, but help us to live like we're family, loving and inviting and serving one another. And I want to commend City of Joy that's what Karen and I felt while we were out of town as the body served us. And that's what we've seen for five years. And I pray for more. Lastly, remind one another. Look at your sheet. Let's say this together. This is it. We're done. Remind one another. Let's go. Eight. That our mission is to make disciples of Christ. That's our mission. Matthew 28. Jesus said it. He says, go make disciples of all nations. That means those who put their faith in him and follow him like you did. The Lord is worthy of more and more followers of him. Your cousin, your mom, your grandma, your homeboy, your friend, your co-worker. The Lord has placed you there because he's wanting to love them through you and make them followers of Christ. That's the mission. Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I remember I was eating Chipotle with Mark Obi and he said, and we were just talking about the different stuff. He said, hey man, have you been, sh who, have you shared, have you gotten, who have you gotten to share the gospel with? He was just passing. I, I told him that the other week. He's like, I don't remember saying that. Well, that's fine, but I do. <laughs> and it made me think and it produced the fruit in my life where I was not too long ago after that with somebody, shared the gospel with them, and they were zoned in. That's called weaving eternal intentionality into everyday conversations for God's glory. We need to be reminded.